your cells, I want you to type in what do you think about when you hear that word cells. So what do you think about when you hear cells? That's your attendance question. What do you think about when you hear the word cells? Okay, white and red, blood cells, cool. All right, what do you think about when you hear cells? That is there. So cells, what do you guys think about when you hear the word cells? All right, and then, can you guys see? I'm trying to make it so online peeps can see. There we go. Ha ha. All right. So online peeps, you should be able to see what I'm writing on the board as I'm writing it. That's what is behind my face. Okay. And then the other screen though is going to be this. Okay. So that's going to be what we end up with. So if you're looking behind my head, you've got what I'm writing on the board. And then if you're looking on the share screen, that's what we're going to end up with. Thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs sideways. Does that comprend comprende? All right, cool. All right, in-person peeps. So the when we look at cells, so our next unit or the unit that we're on is cells to circulatory system. So we're going to break down your body by its smallest unit, yeah? So in chemistry, the smallest thing in chemistry is what? Molecule, which is made up of the periodic table of? Elements. Elements, right? In biology, when we talk about living structures, this baseline of a living structure is a? Cell. Is a cell. Okay, cool. Perfect. All right, so we're going to talk about cells. We are breaking down the cells of the circulatory system. So this is going to be the cells that we find in our fluid, in our closed fluid. So a cool thing that makes vertebrates vertebrates is that we have a circulatory system, right? We have a closed, what we call a closed circulatory system. We have veins, yeah? If I look at my arms, I can see these amazing bright blue veins because I'm super pale and my skin's super thin, okay? So we're going to break down red blood cells, white blood cells. But before we do that, we are going to break down things that can cause an immune response. Why are these cells even here, right? Why are they even important? So the first thing I'm going to look at are antigens. Antigens should seem familiar. What word do they remind us of? Or end in the same thing that we just saw talking about diseases. Pathogens, right? So pathogens are specifically disease-causing organisms or molecules. Antigens are just foreign particles. It may not be a disease causer. So an allergen would be an example of an antigen. It's not necessarily going to cause me a disease, but it would be some foreign material. Elements are also considered antigens. So we're going to go for antigens. This is the very top left of my paper. So the very first box top left is antigens. So an antigen is any foreign substance. And I'm going to put in my circulatory fluid because this could be within my blood or it could be in something called my lymph fluid because I'm going to draw pictures. Mrs. Ritter, you have yours, right? Do you want to flash them yours really quick? Okay. So it's any foreign substance in my circulatory fluid. An example
is going to be bacteria, but also allergens, elements. So maybe we have mercury, right? Like an extra high amount of mercury in our blood, um, things of that nature. Okay. Why is our why are antigens important? Well, antigens are important because when our body, when our cells detect these antigens, it's going to cause an immune response, right? So the detection of these things are going to cause my body to have an immune reaction. Okay. Well, that is not horrible, online peeps. Okay. Is it backwards to you guys, or do you see it the right way, online people, what I'm projecting? It does? Okay. Cool. Awesome. And is that helpful for you guys to see how I'm writing it as well as it already there on the shared screen? Okay, cool. All right. So now we're going to draw the pictures. Okay. So antigens, I'm just going to have fun and I'm just going to draw a lot of different examples, right? So I know that it can be bacteria. So I'm going to draw my little bacterium. Here's my little flagella. It's got some cilia on there. Okay. I'm going to draw... I said elements, so I'm going to draw my version of a periodic table. Whoop. Okay. There's elements. I also said that it can just be allergens. For me, what I think of when I think of allergens, I think of pollen, right? Because pollen makes me sneeze. But... It could also be like the dander from your dogs or your cats. Urine can be an allergen. Um, but so I'm going to make like a little, um, like a pollen burst or what I think of would be pollen, which is kind of like a fuzzball. But you guys draw whatever you want. I'm just going to draw like a poofy. To me, that's going to be my pollen. Maybe I can draw some bacteria. some cocci bacteria. Okay. So that is antigens. Well, so what is this immune response you ask of, right? What is it really that we're talking about when we're talking immune response? So what ends up happening is this cool thing called phagocytosis. That's the first immune response we have that we don't even like, we are not even cognizant of. Right now, your body could be going through phagocytosis. There could be dust that came into your system that your cells are combating right now that we know nothing about. Hence, antigens aren't necessarily disease causing. They're just stimulating that immune response. So thumbs up, thumbs down. Well, thumbs up when I'm ready or you can flash me your picture. Okay, cool. All right, so next we're going to go to pathogens. Not pathogens, I'm sorry. Phagocytosis, the other P word. Okay. So in phagocytosis, I have site. What did we say site means? C-Y-T, what was site? Does anybody remember what that means? Online peeps, you're more than welcome to cheat and use your resources. It means cell. Good. So site means cell. All right. So site means cell. And then I can break down FAG or P-H-A-G. And that means to eat.
So then what is phagocytosis? Throw out your best guess. What is phagocytosis? What is it? Eating cells. Cell eater. Yeah? Okay, so anytime I'm thinking of phagocytosis, I'm thinking of one cell eating another cell. How many of you guys have played Pac-Man or Mrs. Pac-Man? Mar, 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 mar. Okay, so that's what I'm going to think of. So I'm actually going to draw that image right away. So I'm just going to draw a C. Boop. So I'm going to think of Mrs. Pac-Man. So it's going to have a bow. Boop. So I'm going to think of Mrs. Pac-Man. That's what phagocytosis is going to remind me of. This is a natural immune response. So remember talking about immunity and we said, hey, there's things that you're just naturally immune to. This is part of that process. So it's just a natural immune response. You don't have to think about this. Your cells just do it. This is one of the problems, though, if you've heard of somebody that has an autoimmune disease where your cells start attacking your cells, this is what happens is that they end up phagocytizing, they end up eating each other, so your cells eat the good cells. Okay, so it's a natural immune response or a line of defense. It's the first line of defense we have. Well, not the first because our skin was their protective barrier, blah, 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 when we're talking cellular, okay? All right. Phagocytosis is only carried out by our white blood cells, okay? So carried out by WBC. What do we think WBC stands for? White blood cells. I will use three words interchangeably with white blood cells as well as with red blood cells. We will shorthand them and call them WBCs. And then in the next box, we'll look at what we call them scientifically. And we'll call them white blood cells. Okay. Now I'm going to attempt to draw the process. Do you guys have a preference? I need two colors for my cell. I'm going to do one is the cell. One is the, actually color preferences for my cell. Anybody? Do you care what color? Huh? Blue? Okay, so my cell will be blue. All right, so here is my white blood cell. Now, white blood cells aren't always necessarily circular, but we'll go into that. And then I have a little nuclei, okay? Remember that pollen I said, right? That's an antigen. So here's my little burst. So when these two come into contact with each other, I'm going to start this phagocytosis process. So they meet, here's my pollen, and then I'm going to go vroom, and I'm going to start to eat it. There's my nucleus, okay? And eventually, eventually that pollen then is getting absorbed into, it gets sucked in. By all means, Mrs. Ritter, at any point you want to chime and adjust. Hopefully this is on your test. All right. So that's phagocytosis. Go ahead, online peeps. Just toss. Let me see. That's what we got for phagocytosis. Did it say failure? All right. That's my pollen. My orange is my pollen. Yeah. It's whatever you the orange is the antigen. Do I need, here, do you want me to label that? Here. Antigen. Okay, so that's my antigen. And then this is my white blood cell. Okay, 
Boom, boom. All right. Online peeps, you good? Okay. In-person peeps, we good? Okay. So I've got antigens. I have phagocytosis. Phagocytosis is carried out by what kind of cells? White blood cells. So I'm going to now go into white blood cells. All right. So we've got my WBCs. So WBCs, I've got my white blood cells. Fancy word for white blood cells, leukocytes. Leukocytes. So scientific word is going to be leukocytes. So white blood cells. So on the test, you might see WBC. You might see white blood cell. You might see leukocyte. They are all the same thing. They are our defense against our antigens. Okay. There are going to be five total white blood cells that we talk about. So five total. We're going to talk about three granulocytes. And two agranulocytes. Now I'm leaving space in here because I'm going to write a little bit in there. What do we think of when we hear that word granulocyte? Granules. What do granules like? Tiny. We think of sand, right? We think of speckles. We think of grainy. Perfect. That's exactly what we want to think about. So granulocytes, are they have a speckled cytoplasm. Okay. So we have a speckled cytoplasm. A granulocytes, remember what that prefix A stands for? <laughs> a is without or not having any, right? So then an A granulocyte is without speckled cytoplasm. There we go. Okay. So without speckled cytoplasm. Now, when we look at our white blood cells, we are specifically looking at mammalian white blood cells, just so we're all on the same page with that. When we get to red, we'll understand why I need to make that distinction, but we are specifically talking about mammalian white blood cells, okay? So how do white blood cells look? Well, they come in a lot of different sizes and shapes, but I want to just be able to first distinguish a granulocyte versus granulocyte. So nothing's ever, white blood cells aren't true circles. Um, some of them will be, but some aren't. So I just kind of make a little wiggle woggle. And then they do have a nucleus. So I'm going to make kind of a funky shaped nucleus in here. I'm going to color that in. And if this is a granulocyte, what do I need to add to it? I need to add speckles to my cytoplasm. So I'm just going to go do, 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 and go crazy dots all over. I did, I did different. Yeah. So when they're actually stained underneath a microscope, you're going to see it'll be very... Very difficult to differentiate that. Um, it'll be a darker purple to where your nucleus might be more of a, a pink red, but it's going to be, a, or like a blue, it's going to be a very small distinction in shade. 
um, for you to, to see that. But I am going to use a different color just for us. And then an A granulocyte is going to be similar. Um, I'm going to have more of a solid. I, that looks like a mustache. Sorry. <laughs> I'm going to have more of a solid cytoplasm here. And then I don't need any granules. No granules. Then online peeps, you can flash it when you're done with it. Okay, awesome. All right. So white blood cells. Now we're going to break down the white blood cells. So now what's going to happen is that when the bell rings, guys, for my online peeps, I'm going to actually keep going because we've got a really good flow. So this is going to turn into the notes that I post. So if you're online and you need to leave, you can leave. Just type in the chat. Um, if you're online and you can stay, by all means, you can stay for the rest of this lecture. In-person peeps, you'll just have to go and I'm sorry. All right. So after white blood cells, we're going to break it down now. Cool. So I'm first going to look at my granulocytes. So the first granulocyte I'm going to talk about is a neutrophil. Neutrophils are, are the most common granulocytes, which is why I'm going to look at those first. And if we think of what word do I see in neutrophil? Neutral, right? So think of a neutrophil is going to neutralize the enemy, right? It's going to neutralize that antigen. It's going to be the first line. It's going to be your most common trooper, okay? It is a granulocyte. It's your most common first line of defense. So actually, if you don't see white, if you don't see neutrophils when you do a blood count or when you do a blood smear, if you don't see it, you have to like, that's going to be a sign of alarm. Be like, whoa, why don't I have any neutrophils here? So you definitely are going to see them. They are also a phagocyte. So neutrophils will be phagocytizing that first line of things that come in. So they are a phagocyte. Not all white blood cells are. If I see a flare-up in white blood cells, and specifically in neutrophils, I'm going to see an increase in these when there's inflammation or an infection. So if you get a cut, you're going to see more of these neutrophils because they're healing the skin somewhere, right? They're preventing those things that come in. Bacteria and stuff can get in cuts really easily. So my neutrophil is going to be increased because I'm working at that. So if you guys are like, oh, hey, I've got a lot of neutrophils or my white blood cell count is increased, well, maybe you're sick. This is why we look at blood, because if I have an increase in overall white blood cell count, I know that my body is fighting something. Neutrophils will look two different ways. I will have something called a normal or segmented neutrophil. And then I will have something called a banded neutrophil. And the difference is going to be my nucleus. So in a segmented, it's going to look as though, I'm going to kind of draw an X. It's going to look as though my nucleus has two segments to it, right? So here's a segment and then here's a segment. Almost like when you think of chromosomes when you guys are drawing cells back in the day, okay? And it is... Granulode, granulated. Okay. So this is a norm. Or segmented. So norm or segmented. 
Then we have what's called a banded. Okay. All right. So, all right. So then we have banded. Banded, I always thought it's like, I guess it's a U. I've, I always thought of a dumbbell, but like a dumbbell from a cartoon where you can't really pick it up all the way. So you kind of have like the little edges. Okay. But, or it's a U. And again, this isn't necessarily always this way as far as the U is always upside down. It's not always that way because of the fact that it's three-dimensional and it's going to move right? Everything's not perfect. This is just happens to be how we're drawing it. So this is called a banded neutrophil. Okay. And then we have our dots. Boom, 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 boom. All right. So we have banded is going to have just a single kind of U nuclei. And then we have segmented, which is going to have just segmented pieces. Um, oftentimes it's four different kind of arms, if you will. Um, for our test, we won't need to know the difference between segmented and banded, but I want you guys to know if you see them, you might see differences in those nuclei. Okay. All right. And then go ahead and flash that one when you've got it. Awesome. All right. And as long as you're staying with me, you guys can stay. If you have to go just, um, shoot a buy in the chat, but otherwise I'm going to keep working through this. Okay. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Sweet. Okay, cool. All right. So after our neutrophil, we have another granulocyte, right? Called an eosinophil. So our eosinophil is, we really shouldn't see a lot of eosinophils. So they're not horribly common uh, because they are going to be in response to an allergic reaction. And if I have an animal that's come in with a whole bunch of hives on it, chances are I'm just going to be medicating for antibiotic, like for an anti-allergy med, and I'm not going to necessarily do blood work right away on it. But if I were to do blood work on an animal that has severe hives, I would probably expect to see a higher level of eosinophils. So again, they are a granulocyte. And they are going to increase in number with, with um, allergic reactions. Ah. Uh, increase number with... Allergic reactions. And RXN is our shorthand for reaction. Okay. So when I have an allergen response, they're also possibly going to increase with parasitic infection. Okay, so if I have a tick bite, that tick has saliva, right? And that saliva is going to get into my, my, my circulatory system or my fluid that is encased in my veins and vessels. And then that is going to be kind of, again, that allergy reaction, but possibly specifics to parasites, okay? Now, super important thing with eosinophils, it's not a phagocyte. Um, but what it is going to do is send a chemical signal that's going to trigger a granulocyte production. So it's going to send a signal that says, hey, dudes, I need some extra troops. Okay. So they're going to send a chemical. To trigger the production of agranulocytes. Oh 
All right, so they're going to trigger that. Now, when we talk specifically, right, we have our mammalian white blood cells, and now not even mammalian, but I'm going to go even more specific and say I'm going to draw an example of a feline eosinophil. So here I have, right, not quite a full circle. And now my nucleus is kind of going to be wonky and all over the place. So it's not perfectly straight. It's going to have a little line. It almost, I don't know, it almost looks like three little wedges, I guess, if you will. So there's almost three nodes to it. And again, nuclei get a little kind of funky because of the movement and the three-dimensionality of the cells. But it is a granulocyte, so I am going to add that. Okay. All right, and this is specifically a feline eosinophil. So canines are going to look different. And if you do a Google search for like white blood cells of a canine, you'll have five different cells will pop up. If you do white blood cells of a feline, they'll pop up horses, right? Like you'll be able to find the different types or what they look like. This is just a good rough example. You won't need to know specifically if it's a feline or if it's a canine on the exam. Okay. I just want you to kind of have a good rough idea of it. So that's eosinophils. Then go ahead and flash the screen when you've got that one. Cool. Everybody's charts are looking so good. All right. So after eosinophil, the last granulocyte we're going to look at is going to be a basophil or basophil. Kind of depends on how you pronounce it. Always make sure to ask, especially when you guys get into your veterinary clinics and your instructors, ask multiple doctors um, how they pronounce things. I'm really bad with certain pronunciations, especially stuff that has um, a good amount of vowels in it because there's just so many different rules. Um, so like I say basophil, but some people may say basophil. Um, so just make sure you ask. And if somebody corrects you, that's super okay, right? And you can just be like, oh, my teacher just taught me this way. And then you can ask them how to pronounce it. And there might be more than one pronunciation for a way, for, for different words. All right. So basophil it is another, the last of our granulocytes. Okay, um, basophils may actually indicate heartworm. So again, I shouldn't have a high level of basophils. So if I do, then I definitely, it's going to set off some alarm bells for me. Okay. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. I'm like, whoop, there we go. All right, and so with basophils, I will get an increased number um, for allergic responses. So think of an allergic response as a little less severe than an allergic reaction. Um, and then also I will have an increase with a nonspecific immune response. So this is when we're talking about, like, we're not quite sure what's happening to our immune system, but it's being triggered for some reason. This is where we're going to see the basophils um, spike in number. Okay. These as well are going to trigger that chemical, um, send a chemical signal to trigger the agranulocyte production. So it's not a phagocyte. It's going to trigger um, production and get some backup. It's going to be like, whoa, Nelly, I got some things I can't handle on my own. Somebody come help me. Okay. 
And then here I'm going to draw an example of both a feline and a canine just because they are so different in appearance, but I want us to see those. Thank you guys for helping each other out on those notes. I really appreciate it. Okay. All right. So I'm going to draw the feline on top. Again, not quite a great circle, so it's okay. With the feline, they honestly, it looks like they have two nuclei because that nucleus is just split a little bit in that center. It's still just one, but just kind of how it visualizes is just very thin to the sides. Okay. Boom. I'm still granulated. So I'm going to draw my granules. Okay. And this is a feline. And then the other I'm going to draw as a canine. Now with the canine, the nucleus is very solid. So my nucleus is almost going to be very similar in shape to the actual cell itself. That's a canine. And again, that granulation, since it's in the cytoplasm, that granulation is even going to happen over that nucleus, which is why it's a little bit difficult to discern those sometimes or tell the difference. So that's your basophil. And then go ahead and flash that one when you got it. And you guys are doing a great job pacing yourselves and just chatting when you have to leave. So I totally understand. Otherwise, you're, you're stuck with me if you want to keep with the notes. We've got four more boxes left on these, okay? Two more lymphocytes or two more leukocytes, sorry. And then we are going to look at the other two components that make up the blood. All right. So ready? Next, I gave it away. We are so we're done with our a or we're done with our granulocytes. So now I'm going to look at my a granulocytes. How many of you guys have heard of this one? A lymphocyte. Yeah, right. A lot of, or we've heard of a word within lymphocyte. What have we heard of within lymphocyte that sounds familiar? Ooh. You guys stumped? Good lymph nodes. Awesome. So yeah, so you guys have your lymph nodes. We generally, if we're sick, right, we're going to feel an elevation or a swollen lymph node. And that's because these lymphocytes are produced in the lymph nodes. So that's why they'll get swollen. Or one of the reasons I should say they can get swollen. So we have a lymphocyte. Okay. So lymphocytes are agranulated. They're going to be produced in the lymph nodes. So this is also why your doctors are going to palpate those lymph nodes because they're going to check for swelling and that's going to be a good indicator on whether or not uh, the animals got an increase in white blood cell production, specifically the lymphocytes. Lymphocytes are pretty awesome. They are going to be producing antibodies. So remember we talked about that protein, um, the antibodies, right, of how we then can kind of determine if we see something and we've seen it before, we have those antibodies in our system, our lymphocytes are responsible for that. We have two types of lymphocytes. We have T and B. Okay. And they're responsible for different things, but we won't go into it. So you have T and B lymphocytes. Now with our lymphocytes, we're going to see a change in the nucleus now where the nucleus almost takes over the whole cell structure. So again, I have an uneven body and pretty much most of this is going to be nuclei or nucleus. Okay. 
All right. Okay. So that's our lymphocyte. And then you guys can go ahead and flash that when you got it. Okay. Awesome. All right. And the last white blood cell we're going to look at is a monocyte. Monocytes are my favorite just because they're huge. Um, monocyte, I want you to think of a monocyte as a larger agranulated version of a neutrophil. Okay, so it is agranulated. And why is it like a neutrophil? Why do I say that it's a baby neutrophil or larger neutrophil that's agranulated? Because it's a phagocyte. So this is your other cell that is going to be responsible for phagocytosis. So when the basophil or eosinophil sees an antigen and they're like, hey, I can't handle this. I need my backup. I've triggered my granulocyte production. This is where that monocyte can step in and be like, hey, I'm the largest white blood cell. I can totally phagocytize this thing. So let me in at it, right? So it is going to phagocytize as well. So it is the largest white blood cell. You're in going to see an increased production or an increased number with those with infection. So your body has an overpopulation of something, right? Overpopulation of yeast, overpopulation of bacteria, overpopulation of something going on. So those monocytes are going to come in at it. They also are kind of larger neutrophils, agranulated neutrophils, because of that nuclei structure. So they're going to be fairly large. And that nucleus is going to be that U or bell, barbell shape again. But it's going to be big. So when you're looking at a microscope and you have to count these because you will, just in case a computer's not working right or you get something funky and you're like, hey, I'm not sure if that's real. Let me double check this by hand. You have to do what's called a um, differential where you have to count up all these white blood cells. So the difference between that monocyte and the neutrophil may only in appearance be the presence of those granules. So it may be very difficult for you to tell those differences. Okay, so that's our monocyte. Go ahead and flash it when you got it. And then flip your paper over. Okay, and then we're going to start the back two. So we're just going to do the top two on the back side of your paper. Boop. All right. So we're going to go into the other two components of our blood. So we have all those white blood cells, and then we have the other blood cell, which is our red blood cells. So we have our RBCs. Red blood cell, scientific name of a red blood cell is going to be erythrocyte. So erythrocyte. So on the test, you may see it, RBC, you may see erythrocyte. Okay. So RBC. And red blood cells have a super, super important role, which is why they make up all, not all, why, by the way, they make up the most of our uh, fluid. And that's because they do what? They carry our oxygen. Okay, so they're the most important things that we have, well, I guess in my opinion, um, because they're going to carry the white blood, the oxygen. So they're going to carry oxygen. 
and they do this via hemoglobin. So hemoglobin is actually a protein that's attached onto our white blood, or are attached to our red blood cells. That is what is attaching to the oxygen. So it's protein that connects to the oxygen and carries it to the cells. And then it says, okay, cool. Hey cell, you need oxygen. You've got carbon dioxide. Let me take your carbon dioxide for you and I'll give you some of this oxygen so we can trade off. Okay. So that's the hemoglobin. And the hemoglobin is actually what's giving your blood cells that red coloring is um, the oxygen that's attaching to the hemoglobin. So we're going to distinguish here between mammalian and non-mammalian red blood cells. So again, all the white blood cells we talked about are mammalian, and this is why it's important, because there are differences. So we're going to look at, let's see, mammals and non-mammals. Okay, the biggest thing, there's two big things that we want to make note of. One is going to be the shape. The other is the presence or absence of a nucleus. So mammals is going to be spherical. Where non-mammals are going to be elliptical or ovule. Okay. So I have my oval, and then I have my circle. The other super important thing is whether or not there's a nuclei. So one of the reasons why our red blood cells look like donuts is because I don't have a nucleus. So there's no nucleus. Versus my non-mammalian, and they have a nucleus. So I'm going to have that darkened center because I have a nucleus versus my mammalian. It's going to be shaded on the outside just because it's thicker on the outside. There's more, more thickness to the cell. It's also this way because of the cross-section shape. So if I make a cross-section, and a cross-section is like cutting something, I'm slicing it in half, and I'm going to look at it. So it's like you take your cheeseburger, arf, and you take a big bite at it, and then you look at what you just bit. That's a cross-section. So I have my circle. And it's going to be what we call concave in the circle. And it's concave on both sides. So there's really no room for a nucleus. So it's rounded in. Versus my non-mammalian. It's just concave on one side. There's my nucleus. Okay, so it's just concave on one side. All right, and then go ahead and flash it when you're done with it. And we've got platelets is the last thing that we're going to look at. Does anybody want to type in what platelets are? Um, why did you color in the area where it wasn't concave for the non-mammals? Because that's where the nucleus is. Oh, okay. Yep, so that's my nuclei. So this is my nucleus. 
So because mammalians concave on both sides, there's like no place for a nucleus to be. So here it's concave only on one side because then the nucleus takes up the other section. Does that make sense? Okay, cool. Awesome. All right, you ready for platelets? Yeah, yeah? All right. So we'll jump over to platelets. Now, platelet is the third cellular component of a of your blood or of your fluid. And this is what is responsible. It's also the smallest component. And this is what is the first stage of stopping your blood from bleeding. So a blood clot, right? In order to stop your blood from bleeding, it's called a clot. And when it dries up, it solidifies, okay? So we have a platelet. So the scientific name for a platelet is a thrombocyte. So again, I'm going to be able to use thrombocyte and platelet interchangeably. So thrombocyte is a platelet. Platelet is a thrombocyte. They are the smallest cellular structure, smallest cellular component of your blood. And this is the first phase in a blood clot or stopping the bleeding, okay? So it's the first phase. Now, when you guys actually go into tech school, you're going to learn more about blood clots and how blood clots are formed and the healing of wounds and stuff. It's a super intricate process. It's very, very cool. Um, but platelets is just that first phase of it. Okay, so blood clots on the um, stain All right, so um, Platelets kind of depends on what phase of the platelet you see as far as what it might look like underneath a microscope. Um, but if you're just seeing a, a ba like a basic platelet, it's not doing anything, um, it is going to just be a little dot. And I'm using purple sometimes, like they are pinkish still color on the stain. Um, but just to differentiate it from the red blood cells. So you might just see a regular dot. And again, it's going to be the smallest thing you see. Or you might see like kind of almost like a starburst where it's like a, a fuzzball or a firework. Or you might even see a cluster where it's like exploded. So you might see several together, but they're all like woven together like a web. Okay, so you might see that. And that's because they're starting to like form. Um, fibrinogen is something that is formed with platelets and blood clots. So if you think of fibers, um, that's why it looks like there's little fibers coming off of them. So that is platelets and all you guys need to know about platelets. <laughs>